<laughs> yes, you guys, welcome back. I'm in EFC. This is Blue Lines TV, and I'm in a very happy mood today, you guys, because finally, after God knows how long, I'm seeing my beautiful club playing football again. Now, it was quite hard covering the last game against Peterborough, considering that no one knew what was happening as that game was behind closed doors. So, finally, for me, pre season officially kicks off today. And what a nice way to kick things off by getting a 2-1 win against Bournemouth with goals courtesy from Armando Broja. I'm talking about this guy today, you guys. Armando Broja. And of course, Ike Ugbro as well. Close to signing for Jenk. I mean, I can see why this guy had tons of clubs across Europe looking at him and wanting to sign him. Yeah, you guys, I'm in a very good mood today. And the fact that I haven't even eaten since like, what, 2.30 this afternoon and I don't care and I'm not feeling it. That tells you everything you need to know about my moods. So I hope you guys do enjoy it. But before I continue on, I have to let you guys know this, you know, the algorithm, sometimes it's my friend, most times it's not. I have released the big breaking news surrounding Kunde. Everything's updated. I go in depth. I let you guys know why Kunde is being signed in the first place. Plus. You know, I give you guys a little bit of insight behind the scenes as well. So, of course, you guys, I'm here to hook you up. That's what I do. So, if you like today's video, if you're happy with the result, if you're happy with the broad goals as well, smash that like button. I want to get over 2,000 likes for today's video. And without wasting any more time, let's just get straight into things and let's look at that first half lineup. Now, of course, you know, we saw a 3 4 2 1 system. We saw Hudson Adoy playing as the wing back again. Wing back Adoy came back. You guys know my personal feelings behind that. We saw Gallagher in midfield alongside Drinkwater. We saw Lewis Baker in the middle of the back three, joined by Dujon Sterling, Malang Saar, uh, Alonso. I mean, you guys can see the damn lineup. And, you know, I'm going to break things down half by half because it was literally like playing two different games. First half, players that stood out for me immediately Hudson Adoy. Now with Hudson, we've been hearing in the reports, you guys, that he's impressing Tuchel. He's got that yard of pace back. Do you know how big that news is? He's got that yard of pace back. You know the difference that will make for him for next season? And it's like, I could see the glimpses already in that game today, you guys. I could see him. I could see Callum doing his thing. I could see Callum Hudson-Odoi, um, you know, showing some great touches on the ball. Bursting forward, creating those overloads, moving infield as well to free up space for Dujon to burst forward when he had to. All the dangerous moments were mostly coming from him with his very intelligent cutback crosses. And you know, the great players, the best ones, they play at a tempo, they play at a pace. They know what they're going to do with the ball before they receive it. And when I see Callum play, I'm like, oh, I can understand why this guy constantly ranks high for creative stats. Um, I'm very excited to see how he plays and I'm praying Tuchel, please Tuchel, play Callum further forward in preseason. Please let him play on that left hand side. I don't want to see Callum turn into one of the best wing backs in Europe. No, 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 no. I'm not here for that. But um, regardless of my personal uh, preference, you guys, this is very positive from him. And to continue on, the two other surprising ones for me was Danny Drinkwater, who was playing some excellent passes, actually. Some beautiful switch balls. And that's always been a part of Danny's game. He's always been able to play passes like that for fun. And he demonstrated that today. And he, it, it looked like he was showing some hunger in the game today. And that was very impressive. In particular, you know, finding Alonso and Pulisic down the left-hand side with some great switch balls. And finding Callum as well. It was good to see from him. And for my other standout player of the first half, I'd have to say that was Lewis Baker. And like immediately, I was just hooked on Baker from the start when, you know, there was like a small mistake from him with his positioning. He thought Solanke was going to capitalize and go through on goal. But like Baker's anticipation of reading, he already made that slide tackle before um, Solanke even was able to take a shot on goal and deflect the things away. And surprisingly, he was quite involved offensively at the back too. And he was coming out on top. And on top of that too, he marshaled the defence. He told them where to go, who to be. Midfield, come back. No, let's push forward. So uh, based on this preseason game, based on the context of this game, I understand why Tuchel played him in the middle of the back three. And yeah, you know, am I even going to try to imply that, you know, let's give Baker a chance. I mean, come on, you guys. No. But he played well today and there's nothing wrong with saying that. But um, of course, in the first half, I guess, again, you know, I don't want to get too critical because it's only pre-season. That would be really weird, in my opinion. But um, it did feel like we could have actually sealed the game in the first half. 
Tammy Abraham had three excellent opportunities made for him and I understand that there'll be criticism against him, you know, all the good work that he showed with some of his movement in behind, with some of the link up as well, him pressing the front too, and his hold up, that will be ignored due to the misses, but I'm sorry you guys, if you tell the guys, you know, if you kick him out the team and he ain't played football since like what, December or, or January, then I don't really know what to expect, do you think the finishing will come back just like that? For me, he's in the right places, in the right areas. Let's see what happens and let's see how much he does with that. But, um, you know, there was some great passes, uh, great chances in particular that you're hoping Tammy would do a bit better from. In particular, the cut back from hudson Adoy. And for me, at the end, that little Ziek, little like, you know, death, like clip cross into the box uh, right to the near post. I thought Tammy for sure was scoring that goal. But, um, you know, in that first half, we saw some good, um, nice little pieces of play, to be fair. I thought a few times with our back three, it felt like we weren't moving the ball quickly enough into the midfields, into the final thirds. Um, but uh, again, it's pre-season and this is like one of the fakest defences I've ever seen. But um, before I even move on to the second half, you guys, I want to mention Dujan Sterling. Uh, for me, I've got a lot of respect for the guy. Suffered many injuries and he's shown that, uh, you know, he's got that desire, man. I mean, he's a fighter. He's a, he's a, he, he wants this. And I thought he looked good today. Yeah, he gave one little foul away. Big deal. You know, I'm, I'm happy he gave the foul away instead of letting his man get in behind him. I didn't get to see him push forward as much as I would have liked. But um, of course, that's going to be the case when you're using that, that same exact midfield. You know what I mean? But uh, regardless, though, it felt like we should be leaving the first half. But in regards to us playing our normal three at the back setup, uh, I felt like we could see all those little pieces of play that's like literally burned into our muscle memory. So right now, let's now move on to the second half. And now we move on to the second half, you guys. And to be honest, this was a completely different lineup. We saw a 3-5-2. We saw substitutions to basically every outfield player. Um, um, of course, you know, the whole team became different in the end when your Zappers and your Babbers came on to replace Hudson and to replace Alonso. But, um, you know, we saw Mendy playing, which is good to see one of like the core players back playing. And for me, I thought he looked better than Kepa straight away. I'm sorry, you know, in my watch long, I kept mentioning the terrible passes out from the back from Kepa and there's details I don't see from Mendy uh, even though he did make a mistake in the game himself to be fair but um you know seeing that midfield though was quite interesting in the game man we saw Ruben playing essentially that pivot role alongside Conor Gallagher and of course it's no surprise because Ruben can play different roles in midfields that's what he can do and playing how we play, having the back three behind us and protection, that compactness. I feel like Ruben can definitely play in midfield for us. And it was interesting to see how he was um, performing his defensive responsibilities. I do think that now as I watch football, I'm always like paying attention to like the, the work rate, you know, the positioning. Those types of intangibles a lot more than I ever used to do. Uh, you know, of course, under Tuchel, you're only going to learn more about football when you watch our, our style of play. But um, it was nice to see Ruben deeper linking up with Conor Gallagher. I felt at times every now and then there was like uh, a negative pass play backwards that kind of ruined a few moves. Like in particular, there was one point where I think I saw Hudson and Doy free on the right hand side for like a good two minutes. And there was, I was kind of hoping that Ruben received it on the half turn and played it quickly in. But um, as I'm saying, this is only pre-season. This stuff is bound to happen, man. But um, for me, it was just great to see Ruben looking assured in the field. And I would not be personally surprised to see him playing deeper more in games throughout this preseason and hopefully next season if he becomes part of the main team. I do want to mention Conor Gallagher though. Obviously, my tweet was a bit interesting. That doesn't really matter though. Of course, some people felt like he wasn't that good. I understand, you know, there's a few passes, of course, for the equalising goal as well. Um, and not the equalising goal. There was an opportunity where Bournemouth could have actually just won the game 2-0. I'm going to say from Conor. But um, for me though, you guys, look at the ground this guy covers. He basically played like two different roles. You know, he played in a two alongside Drinkwater, having to press from the front. And then in the second half, he was receiving a lot deeper, kick signing our attacks. And I thought he played a lot of very nice progressive passes, some nice slow drivens to find like your Ross Barkley's between the lines and other players as well. Uh, he was looking to drive and it felt like he covered every single blade of grass in that pitch because I literally saw him in every area. So of course, every now and then some of the passing was here and there, 
But for me, that doesn't take away from any other positives that I saw from him. And I'm interested to see how he looks to play because he was one of those guys that looked to be playing with a bit of extra intensity to impress Tuchel. And I'm sure Tuchel would have seen the application on show you guys. But um, of course, you know, I can't end this review without talking about the goals we saw today. And let's just start off by discussing them. Why not? Broja. Um, yeah, man. This was a good performance. This was a great cameo. This was a damn great cameo. Um, as I mentioned about the intangibles, his pressing from the front basically won us the game. But before I even touch upon that, you guys, the equalizer goal scored from him. That was a nice, great goal too. You know, Baba makes a mistake, wins the ball back, plays in a nice, low driven. And look at the intelligence from Broja. You know, he wasn't just reacting. He was watching the defensive line at Bournemouth. For some reason, they completely just split apart, which was something he's probably waiting for. He held his run, moved forward a tiny bit, took a great touch with his chest and scored bottom corner with his left foot. That was a great goal. And it felt from then on, the confidence was just like, boom, this is normal for me. Another goal I've scored on the two call. Let's go, man. Because for the winner, the match winner today, it came from Bro just showing incredible application, closing the goalkeeper all the way down forcing Bournemouth to concede a corner, which was then, you know, capitalised on from a great cross from Ross Barkley, which found Ike Ugbo inside the box in the near post, who then buried that in. So, you know, it was nice to see two strikers up front. And for me, if we don't see a 4-3-3, I'm hoping at least we see like different variations when it comes to three at the back systems. You know, maybe certain games two up front, certain games you've got three in midfield, certain games you've got one in the pivot and two guys alongside. They're the type of things I want to see, you guys. And um, for me, you know, this was definitely a positive, encouraging game. On a different day, this would have been 4-1 and everyone's a lot more gassed right now. But at the same time, even though the finishing wasn't consistent due to pre-season, there were still some very good positives to discuss. So um, anyway, you guys, that's going to be me for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. And, you know, let's look forward to more pre-season games to come, man. <sighs> Football's coming back. I'm gassed, I'm excited, and I'm also hungry, and I'm also ready to go. So on that note, I'm in EFC. This is Brunei CV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos. Cool.